in for review today I have the Godox V862 S this version is for the Sony cameras both A and E mount now make note that this is different to some of the other models main area being the lithium ion battery so we're just moving a bit closer now this supports the Godox 2.4G wireless X system and it can operate as a master and a slave flash for the radio wireless systems. This has radio built into the flash. You can also buy a separate hot shoe mounted um, accessory which can act as a trigger as well. Included in this pack I got some extras. This will vary depending on who you buy it from. This is a Velcro attachment which you stick onto the flash. You also have gels to change the light temperature of the flash and there's a sort of storage slot on the uh, transparent plastic cover this is a diffuser, just a cloth one, seems to work fairly well, simple but uh, a nice add-on to have. USA power lead that's using a figure of eight connector, so if you're in Europe or the UK or Australia or anywhere else, you should easily be able to get a cable for that. This is just a quick look at the charger that you get included and the lithium cell. This is rated to around 2000 milliamps an hour, 22 watt an hour. Um, it's quite a chunky unit and it takes something in the region of around two and a half hours, perhaps slightly longer to charge from flat. They reckon it's good for up to about 650 flashes at full power. So even in a worst case scenario, you'd be looking at about double what you'd get with the AA type flash, the TT685, which is very similar to this and has the same functionality, slightly different design. The case is not bad, it's pretty good, a bit of padding and you also get a hot shoe mount stand for the flash. There is no strap on the back, there's a brass thread on that as well which is nice to see, it's so an okay stand, does the job and the case is, is reasonably decent. Now looking a bit closer in at the flash you'll see the compartment for the lithium ion. Note the shape so you can't insert it the wrong way around. Just showing you now inserting the battery after I've charged it. Metal hinge on that as well. Build quality is excellent on this flash, I have to say. I mean, it's easily as good as higher end OEM units. Pop into the unit. You have a small tab there which holds it in place. No chance of that coming out by accident. Looking at the bottom, take off the cover. There's the multi interface shoe and it's a rotary lock on that. So make sure you lock that down. One of the points about the multi-interface shoe is it's um, not doesn't have an auto spring locking mechanism on it so make sure you do lock it down you have two the ports here one of which is a PC sync and a micro USB for firmware update the other one is for attaching the remote controller to the flash pulling out we have a wide-angle diffuser and a flip card a white card there's no locking mechanism on the flash, it's pretty stiff, um, perhaps better than being loose or it's no chance of changing this by accident, whether that sort of loosens up over time. You have 180 degree rotation either side and you can completely turn it around or point it down slightly. Now the layout of the display here, whilst I'm playing around and fiddling with this, you can have a look and see what I'm doing. I find it quite intuitive, just follow the menu buttons at the top, you have the backlit as well, nice big display on this which is very clear and good viewing angles. You'll see the controls change depending on what mode you're in. The power output on this goes down to 1 1 28th up to full power and you're looking at recycle times for about 1.7 1.8 seconds, um, possibly slightly faster. It's going to vary a bit depending on the temperature. Uh, the recycle times are definitely a good second quicker than most AA powered flashes that I've used. Now whether or not that's going to be something which is important to you is perhaps going to decide whether or not you should look at this model or the 685. Um, this is available for Canon and Nikon as well. So we will follow the same sort of principle. This is just the Sony version that I'm looking at. Now I tested this on A and E mount cameras and it worked fine but I do have to tell you that the optical flash mode uh, S1 and S2 that works great but the dedicated TTL flash mode isn't working. Now I contacted Godox about this with the TT685 
S, the Sony model specifically, and they said that it's not working. So I said it's probably best to remove the menu functionality for that and a mention of it in the manual. So if you go through here, you'll see that there are there's a lightning symbol which indicates these sort of standard wireless mode which you would normally find on a Sony or third party flash. You want to look for the radio symbol here. So you have to cycle through that. The green will indicate master and the sort of red and orangey sort of display indicates that it's a slave. So I prefer that they either A, make the optical work and it has a sensor obviously for the S1 and S2 or just take it out. If it doesn't support the Sony or Minolta based, which was originated from Minolta, the wireless flash which can be controlled via either a master flash or if you have an onboard flash on the camera basically my idea of that is it should work or it or just don't put it in there I can see this is aimed more at people that want a complete radio flash solution and there's no doubt that radio flash is a better solution than the optical um, I'm okay with the S1 and the S2 that will do the job in a lot of cases it's just if you're integrating it with other flashes um, that's really what I'd be looking for. Uh, the only other point to mention is the custom menus. You can adjust a few settings on that. Um, there is a beep if you want that as well. There's not a huge amount, but there's enough there, you know, backlight display and stuff like that. Once it's in wireless, you will get the flashing LEDs on the front, just to let you know that it's in standby mode. This is a pattern of the uh, AF assist beam, and it's pretty bright. It looks slightly pink, but it is actually red. Now you also get a readout approximately of display, uh, approximate distance and the aperture used as well. So that gives you a live readout. Important to note if you are using high speed sync indoors, at higher shutter speeds, turn the electronic curtain off on the flash, otherwise you will get banding. That's not a flash issue, that is just because it's an electronic readout on the sensor and I've had it with every other flash that I've used. It's generally not something you find outside because um, it's not enough. There's more light from outside. It's only really when it's inside and it's providing most of the light. The only thing that I've mentioned with this is the over temperature protection. It would be better to slow down the rate of firing rather than shut off. Saying that, didn't really have any problems with the flash shutting off, but it could be an issue if it's a hot day, doing a wedding or something, or reportage photography, where you're firing a lot of bursts. So overall for me, the Godox is a nice flash. It's priced about $200 or 150 pounds. You're paying more for the lithium, but you get quicker recycle times. I would prefer if they included a cartridge for the AA cells so they could use both as a backup. That is really my only complaint other than the lack of the dedicated TTL wireless working.